All right, everybody, welcome to the Comic Wrestling Podcast. We're uh, not in the usual nerd lounge today. We're uh, going to call this the Deadly Den. Uh, we're doing a, uh, I, won't, I don't want to say a special episode, but we're doing a fan request. Uh, he wanted us to watch an episode of Raw from June of 1993, June 21st to be exact. So I don't mind watching some classic Raw, so it should actually be fun. I'm Deadly Dave, and I have Ace Williams here with me as always. So, uh, we have the WWE Network queued up to right where we want to start, so if you want to hit play right now, go right ahead. Monday Night Raw! It's good to have Vince here with me. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm start- excited because I don't remember the shit out of yeah. this. I, don't, I didn't watch this. This was before I started watching yeah. Raw. It's starting with a recap of uh, the Lightning Kid beating Razor Ramon with a fluke victory. I always like this opening, the old school with the... The weird instrumental music. It was Attitude Era before. <laughs> Attitude Era. Like, it just felt that way. Like, I don't know. It's, it's amazing the, the creativity of the, the production that they have back then. Not so much anymore. Don't they say don't... that. They're such a good company. Yeah, you know how good WWE is? I had a friend of mine, um, Buck Barber. Oh, Buck Barber. It's not really a friend. He's an asshole. <laughs> but... He said he's not watching WWE anymore. That's how good it is. Yeah. Isn't that a compliment? That, wait a minute. That's not a compliment. <laughs> you I know mean, what? it's so good, they're firing executives left and right. So. Oh, yeah, the macho man is out looking at me. Oh, yeah, dig it. I always like this broadcast with, with Vince and Bobby and Macho, because the stuff that Macho Man would throw out to Heenan and back and forth was always you really good. You weasel. I love the macho. Look at him. He's just talking. Ah, you got Vince in a tuxedo and then Macho Man looking as only the Macho, macho man, man looking just look. like this. <laughs> looking like a bowl of Skittles. <laughs> That's exactly what Macho Man looking like. <laughs> this is brought to you by... This fan request is brought to you by Skittles. <laughs> we will have a special announcement from them later. And is I, I just like the look of it, and it's so old school. Just no big production, and the way it is now with the screens. Oh, the fucking Steiner brothers, such a great tag. Do team. you think Scott Steiner was overrated? I do. I do as well. I do. Yeah. Do you think Rick Steiner was overrated or underrated, or you? Just, you I, just to be honest, I, I prefer Rick. I think his matches were a lot better. I think he's got more of a look to him. Well, Scott got had more of a look to him later on, but but I think Rick had more personality, like the barking, and he actually I thought he cut good promos. He, he can tell math, and, and can when tell because he, he's got it on his trunks, that just can, it, you know, that is a thing. Scott Steiner is confused as fuck when he's looking at his brother's outfit right now because he's just seeing three and three thirds of a, whatever the hell his percentage math is. But like when when Rick Steiner turned heel after Scott did. I like the, you know, if you don't like me, bite me and all that stuff. Yeah. I thought I thought he cut better promos as a heel, but I, I never really understood the hype with Scott Steiner. Like, the big pop of pump and all that stuff. Like, so you're, you're glorifying that the guy is just juiced to the gills and that you have no wellness policy to speak of. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> you uh, see, uh, I know we're kind of not, I'm going to mention something that's not WWF. Well, I think I saw a thing on YouTube the other day. I didn't watch the video of Ken Shamrock. Yeah, he's an impact. Isn't that strange? Yeah. They're uh, pulling out every rabbit out of the hat that they can. I would have rather he went to, like, WWF and did one more thing and then went in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I'm sure that'll be coming. This is, is Barry probably Wyndham? a temporary. Look at that guy. He looked just like Barry Wyndham, didn't he? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> Jobber Wyndham. <laughs> Very winded. <laughs> yep. I, I like that, you know, back in this era, they were still doing the squash matches with these jobbers on national TV. Right, in a high school. Yeah. And this was before they had the big screen and all that stuff. Like, oh, the Icra Pro logo. That was a failed thing by Vince McMahon. Whoa! Supplements and shit. That with the World Bodybuilding Federation. Now they just have inventory up the ass. Yep. <laughs> I like these matches too because Scott Steiner just did not give a fuck about these jobbers and no, just tossed just them everywhere. Them. Yep. Look at Very Winded right here. <laughs> Very Window Windham's shadow <laughs> with his bad tattoo. Oh and my god, and his even worse mustache. <laughs> his porn stash with his mullet. The mullet was the thing in the '90s, and 
it amazes me how many of the guys had mullets back then. Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, Razor <laughs> Ramon. Just everybody had a fucking mullet. Triple H. J E double F. Oh my god. Ha <laughs> 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 We might even see him in this one. I don't remember though. I'll tell you what we won't see. We won't see no bullshit storylines that go well, they might not go nowhere, I don't know. <laughs> but we won't see any modern day bullshit storylines. That's what we won't see. So uh, what do you think about the, the Eric Bischoff thing with getting fired from SmackDown so quick? I was watching actually, uh, or I just listened to a little bit of Pritchard and Conrad talking about it. Didn't really go into detail of why he got fired and shit. Just kind of, you know, wished him the best. He's friends with him. He loves him. Blah, 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 blah. But everything I've read is everybody's saying that if, if whatever it is that did fail... It was going to be Bischoff's fault. Yeah. Well, okay, fair enough. But what exactly failed to where he had to get fired and he's now getting blamed for it? What did it? Because if nothing happened, well, then why prematurely fire him? Yeah, if he's just a fall guy for Fox, you know, like, yeah. So, but if that's the case, fair enough. You need a patsy. Yeah. But did something happen? Yep. No, I'm asking you. Did something I, I, I To be honest, the only things I've read is that the ratings drop from week one to week two, but that's not a reason to fucking fire somebody for one week of for ratings one, dropping. Right. You know? yeah. Like, the first week you have The Rock, of course the ratings are going to fucking drop when he's not on the show. Right. You know, when you're going back to your regular guys on the roster, hmm. the ratings going to drop a bit, and even if it drops a lot. You know, you... No, it's understandable for that, but yeah, to fire him over something so minute. Yeah. And, like, as far as Fox is concerned, like, They've had pretty consistent ratings the past couple of years with how badly their show has sucked. You should know what the ratings are going in and how they fluctuate. Right. You know, if you do your due oh, diligence. Oh, oh shit. man, did you see that or no? Oh, it was, did he do the screwdriver? Oh, he dropped him right on his head. Can you rewind it? We can yeah. rewind this. Rewind that and watch that. He's going for the Frankensteiner. And he just fucking killed the man. He killed him. <laughs> But yeah, I, I just, I don't understand. If Fox is going to have that much control over the product, that's a bad deal. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, if you're going to be dropping people left and right from their jobs. And Bischoff had moved to Connecticut for it, too, for that job. So, yeah, I can't wait to hear what it, when he, right here, this is the move. Oh, Crunch. yeah. He Kill tried, him. He tried jumping up for the Frankensteiner and did not rotate he at killed all. killed that man. Look at Steiner, me dead. Scott Steiner's a murderer right in the middle oh, of the murdering ring. Murdering bastard. Um, well, that was like the thing I saw on YouTube. Somebody made like a fake video channel. I don't know what the hell it was, it was but the, a video call, like saying, Bischoff on his new podcast, 83 Days. Yeah. And I thought it was funny. So I, I in the Conrad one, I left a comment. I was like, does anybody know if like there's going to be an actual like 83 weeks podcast episode? You know, just throwing it out there because you never know who might reply with, I've heard this or I've heard that. And somebody replied with that, like, oh, well, there's a, he's going to have his 83 Days podcast. That was a fucking joke, guy. Yeah. That was, a, like, the 83 weeks is, like, a play on how long they were in the ratings. Yep. He wasn't even there 83 days, so it doesn't make sense. And if it, it just, no. It, it makes you want to punch people when they make those comments. So I did. <laughs> I did. Well, I went and I found my grandmother. <laughs> what is it called? The Judas, Judas Effect? <laughs> My my that, hero that Chris ho Jericho, that horrible elbow that he does. He's my hero. He, I think he's killing it. Like now he's got this new group called the Inner Circle. Yep. With Sammy Guevara, uh, Jake Sa Hager, and Santana and Ortiz. They're pushing Hager like crazy. I think they're expecting him to be like the future of that company. <laughs> I, think, I think this is the match that our fan was uh, was excited about. A two out of three falls with. Doink the Clown and, and Marty Jannetty. <laughs> Trying to give him that, like, effect so he can hear it. Now, this is not the Doink the Clown that Ace and I have met. We met Ray Apollo. This is actually Matt Bourne, the original Doink the Clown. Yep. The heel Doink the Clown, which I always thought was actually... Yeah, look at that little thing. afro! <laughs> <laughs> the Clown is down! <laughs> the Clown! Oh, he's, 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 oh, no, he's okay. And this is back when they weren't doing any two out of three falls whatsoever, so I'm actually kind of surprised that they would do that. That's kind of a cool shot. I felt like it was during a commercial. I always
always liked Marty Jannetty. I, I think if he didn't get into the substances and always have the hiatuses that he did and getting fired all the time, I think he would have been at least upper middle card. But because he gets he could cut a, a good promo and he was had awesome matches. He but, cut a good line too. Yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> But he just he's another one of those guys, kind of like Jeff Hardy, that just can't get out of their own way, you know? Yeah. They just keep making bad decisions. And I was reading that tweet from Matt Hardy where he was like, look, I've, I've got to worry about my kids and my wife. I can't, you know, there's only so many times where you can talk to somebody and try to straighten them out before you just kind of be like, I got to deal with me and not worry about what you're going through right now. Right. It's a, it's a shame, but, you know. It's reality. Yeah. And somebody I know is like, well, you know, maybe rehab would help him. I'm like, he's done it before. Like, if It's if it his choice take, now to, to yeah. keep doing this. I mean, he's got kids of his own. At some point, you've got to kind of look at yourself. And and a lot of the problem is, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I'm just going to say this. But if they stop wrestling, then their bodies start hurting. Yeah. And if they keep wrestling, they can keep staying on the medication and shit. And they can keep going in the wear and the tear until they have to stop, like a Kurt Angle. Yep. That's like, Jesus Christ, man. If he just stops walking, he's probably going to just die. He needs to just, even though he looks like shit, he probably, he needs to be in constant motion. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but, because but, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. And Jeff seems like that kind of weird personality where the drugs kind of are just part of what he does. You know what I mean? Like it, but, I mean, I don't begrudge anybody for making choices, but at some point you've got to kind of. I do. Some choices. Yeah. Like, I was watching Breaking Bad, and uh, these people picked heroin over their kid, and they made their kid eat fucking fluff sandwiches out of, like, the toilet and shit. <laughs> I judge you for that. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. And you got Doink the Clown as a heel doing, you know, trying to bait Marty Jannetty into the corner. Now, this is just because there's no title? Nah, yeah, I, I yes. Yeah, I don't even know what the sto- if they had a storyline going at this point, because I certainly don't remember it, but... This is back when Raw, like, I remember certain events from Raw. Like, I remember the Razor Ramon 1-2-3 kit thing. But specific matches like this, I just, I don't remember a lot of them. But this was back when they were doing a lot of the enhancement matches with, where Raw would only have, like, one or two main, Mm -hmm. you know, matches with, you know, top-level superstars in them. So, So them doing two out of three falls with Doink and Marty Jannetty is kind of, kind of out of place, but. It would be cool to see them do a Doink the Clown again. Yeah. You and definitely like, could, And yeah. treat it good, not just make it a joke. But actually, because, like, obviously they put this match together because these guys can wrestle. Yeah, Matt Bourne is definitely underrated as far as I'm concerned. And the, and I like the heel clown. Like, I, I don't want to compare it to Joker, but just a clown that, you know, looks like he's a happy person and then makes clown, you know, balloon animals for kids and then pops them afterwards. Right, smiling and then starts just frowning. Yeah, and the music really set it off, too, where it started off like the carnival music and then it was the demonic music afterwards. Yeah. I, I always like that. Now, could you imagine doing the clown if they made him, like, just hypothetically, I know it wasn't even in the same time, but if they had put, like, because they label it good doink and evil doink. Yep. If they had an evil doink part of Ministry of Darkness... Can you imagine be, that? That would be actually That would have been cool. kind of cool. Yeah. Like a doink would like, instead of hair like that, it's draped down like kind of, I know Abyss's hair was real, but on the mask there was fake hair on it. Yeah. But instead of having it fluffy, fun looking hair, it's like draped down like a, I'm going to use Heath Ledger as the example, his kind of hair, like rattier looking, I mean, I don't want to say the, the clown that they use, Crazy Eddie. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say something like that. Right. Because still in the same, this version, but just Ministry of Darkness yeah, version. Totally could work, yeah. And change the colors up a little bit so it's not, you know, it can still be a clown, but do, you know, darker colors so it fits in. I, don't, I like, I have a weird warp mind anyway, so I just <laughs> kind of picture that looking kind of cool. This creepy ass clown coming out with like a viscera and like Undertaker in the big, like, what the fuck is he doing with a clown? Like, yeah. That just adds more mystique to the what the fuck? And like with the, you know, if he had the, the flower, instead of water, he could shoot out like when wrestlers do the green mist mm-hmm. or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but 
I mean, I get why they changed him babyface because it's more merchandise opportunities to do stuff with a clown and yep. you know t-shirts and all that stuff, but because it's easy to put you know a clown face, a generic clown face on merchandise. On merchandise, so. exactly. It's actually been a pretty good match so far, at least. But doing a couple crisscrosses and it's weird to see like them going to rest holds because they really don't do that kind of stuff anymore. It's usually one move to the other non-stop now. I kind of like seeing some of this old school stuff where they're... That's actually... what I miss, is the pacing. Yeah. I honestly miss, and I'm going to say it like this, and I don't mean to sound offensive to wrestling fans at all, because like, it's just true. I miss getting bored with matches like this style bored. Not bored, and I'll, I'm going to try to explain this the best way I can. <clears throat> like... Knowing, like, oh, all right, I can get up and go to the bathroom right now. And, like, they're still going to be in this hole. Yeah. When I go back, you know, hypothetically, like, if you watch something now, say, fucking Finn Balor and Ricochet, you get up to go to the bathroom, like, when they're in one hole, 36 have happened since yep. in that one minute. They've done five suicide dives apiece. And, yeah. Right, and it's just, yep. uh, it's I mean, jarring. And you don't want, like, a Jerry Lawler indie match where he does walking and talking for 20 minutes before they actually do the match. Mm -hmm. But you want some kind of break yeah. in between all the action. Yeah, totally That's awesome. Honestly, and I'm going to say this. I That's why I love Jericho, because I feel like he's that. Yeah. He knows how to do all of it. Like, he's just, his timing on everything. Like, even now, he's so fucking good, like, at his age. And he's not in the best shape of his life. And if anybody no. says he is, you're nuts. Yep. He's in great shape physically, cardio, and all that, but, like, I don't know. He's, I think he is literally, uh, it's hard. He's right up there with Ric Flair for me as, like, legit greatest of all time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll go down as one of the best ever. He'll be, you know, talked about. He's a Hall of Famer, but, I mean, he'll get to that point eventually with WWE, whether he's in AEW or not. Exactly. You know, but, yeah. And he doesn't even need that to for his credentials at all. Oh, no. Not, not at all. And I like I do like that he's the first ever champion. Me but too. You, but you were talking about, like, the pacing of matches. And I think that's kind of why JR isn't doing as well with this product as he did previously mm -hmm. with other companies. Mm -hmm. Just because I think... He needs to tell a story, not describe what's happening in the match. Yeah. And he just, he can't get used to wh everything play -by -play. these guys are doing. Yeah, you know, like Excalibur is doing a lot of the play-by-play, -play, but... He's not exciting. He's so no. fucking annoying and... Uh, I don't want to go off and, that. And JR can't... We'll continue! I don't think he can be the color man. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it doesn't fit him. He needs to be the one guiding the ship, and I just don't, yep. I don't think it works well for him, this three-man boot that he's in. No, I don't, you know? I, I mean, I like it because I love JR, but I don't care for it. It's just something, I like Shivani, I like, I love it. I think that's great. I think him and JR are great Yeah. together. It's just, there is something there. I don't, I don't like Excalibur, though. I feel like he's reading right from a script, or he forgets what he has to say. I don't know. And he's and I'm no public speaker. I probably sound like an asshole on this. And but he's he's one of those ones that I mean, not that he's anything like Joey Styles, but he's trying to get the exact name of every move that mm. they're doing and all this stuff. And it's like, dude, it feels if, force fed. I, yeah, I, I watch wrestling. Like I know, you know. And he was calling the Atomic Drop a Manhattan Drop. The only ones that know that are the people that played the fucking video games in the late '90s, where when you create a wrestler, it called it the Manhattan Drop. I don't even like, know if I remember that. Everybody knows it as an atomic drop. Don't that's try, what I know it try, as. Yeah, don't try to sound smart. You know, why would I mean? it have been and, a Manhattan drop? I don't know. That's the I don't know. That's the reason the the name that's they just called what it. Was? it. Yeah. Hmm. But I've always heard it as an atomic drop. Ever since. Where you're dropping them on the back side of their ass for yeah. the tailbone, right, or the yep. front side? Yeah. And they call it a reverse atomic drop when you do it the other the way. The other way, right. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I don't Shawn know Michaels was, like, famous for that fucking yeah. thing. So, yeah, yep. I don't and, know. and Dustin Rhodes, huh. too, always did it. I don't remember it being called the man. I bet now when I go back and... Well, I wouldn't because I, I can't, but... I wish I could go back in games and look at that. Because I bet that would be like, oh, no shit. One of those kind of moments. And then go for the cover. One, two... Oh, it doesn't even oh. get a one count. McMahon. Oh, my. He got him. Oh, no. What a maneuver. 
It was a pitfall, you asshole. I, that was Ventura. <laughs> he popped in for a minute. I swear to God, Vince McMahon has the trademark on the word maneuver. <laughs> Look at him. Look at how fucking crazy he is. And, and he the, looks like the type of guy that would go to ECW and be like, uh, reborn. Yeah. <laughs> I forget what the name was. <laughs> But this is actually, I mean, it's, it's actually been a good match. Like, and the it's old, not bad. Good old school match. And, I and think it's it, fun to see Doink like this because normally, you, like, for me, he was always just a uh, kind of a running a gag. Yeah. I didn't really get to experience this because this was before I watched wrestling. And, like, that's just a great transition there. Like, Marty Jannetty going for a, a front kick and Doink just moving out of the way and Jannetty yep. takes a back just bump. Just a back, like, yep. And I love how he looks more menacing with the paint, you know, kind of wearing off his face and shit. Like, that's such a good idea for a character, for an evil clown. I mean, a sleeper. How often do you fucking see someone get put in a sleeper where it's not Dolph Ziggler being uh, uh, stupid about it and flailing all over the place? Yeah, they're not just... overselling it. They're, yeah. they're actually as if you're trying to put somebody to sleep. Right, like you're putting your weight into it instead of just fucking like a just dipshit. I was just the uh, level of the way they would explain it where they were, you know, you're trying to push their chin down into their chest cavity so they couldn't breathe, breathe you know, right. I mean, stuff like that. Like, they don't they don't go into those kind of details anymore. They just, uh -uh. oh, it's a super kick. And they don't explain why moves matter anymore or what, what kind of effect it would have on somebody. Like, Britt Baker does the mandible claw in AEW, and they don't explain why, you know, putting the pressure points and all that stuff. They just say Assume she's you doing know it. what it is. Yeah. Yep. What you do, what you do assume, but when you're in, when you're watching the match, you want to feel the emotion. Like, I understand, I know what the move is doing, but make me feel that energy while she's got it applied, or, you know, like, oh, he's up on the top rope, what is he doing? He's wasting all this time, and... Earl, you know, he gets him down. What a waste. And it looks like he's going for a super kick. I'm not a good commentator, but. <laughs> and that's, like, the thing with JR where he's saying he's kind of lost his passion. I was like, and I guess on Twitter, like, he was bitching that Ooh. people said he's lost his passion. I was like, well, if you watch the broadcast, it kind of does sound like it. You know, if you're going to get mad for people for analyzing what you're doing, you know, like, people are yep. going to pick apart shit. And pick, if, it, yep. if it looks that way... Granted, you may not have lost your passion, but, you know, don't begrudge people for thinking you have and, you know, analyzing it that way. Like, Especially if that's how you're putting it out there. Yeah. Janetti going back up to the top rope. Going for that fist drop. Oh, and there it is right across Doink Chase. One, two, three. Oh. He got the first pinfall. Oh. A fist drop off the top. What a maneuver. <laughs> My padded jacket is Fucking ridiculous! The what a maneuver! The shoulder pads, oh my god. We will return! As if Vince needed to look any more, you know, muscular than he mm -hmm. already did. Like, oh, shoulder pads, pal. Oh, all these other wrestlers are out here announcing? Well, I gotta look big. See, that's like, guys don't do this anymore. Begging in the corner, you know, so the referee will back the person off so they can cheat. I, I, I love that stuff. He, Matt Bourne was so good in this character. I wish I wish he could have run with it more, but he had issues too. So he's trying to run right now. Apollo. Oh, speaking of a oh Manhattan drop, yeah. <laughs> Janetti had an awesome that that flying clothesline that he had was really good. I like that. Doink sliding out of the ring. Oh, yep. go for the legs. Nobody does this anymore either. Ramming the leg into the turn or the corner post. Oh, there's a kid in the front row. It looks like the dad's trying to get him to be used as a weapon. <laughs> Hold him up. Take my kid. Hit him with it. <laughs> Hit him with the kid! Slap hands! Slap hands! Doink rolling back in, looking for a, a whoopee cushion. <laughs> and it's so... It, no signs in the crowd, either. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, it's not weird, because it's common now, but weird to know what was after this time. Oh, and a huge figure four by the clown! <laughs> and look, Jeanette's selling it like it hurts, like, like he's gonna die. The way people and slapping He's them tapping out. He's tapping out. I was just, what do you mean? What? <laughs> and I always used to love when they, when people would complain that you know the the figure four is not a pinfall. I'm like, well, his fucking shoulders are down. So whether he's being pinned or not, his shoulders are down. Like they should count it. Mm. I mean, they would do the ten count when guys were you know laying flat on the mat. They would do the ten count before he would get up to his knees. So why wouldn't you count somebody's shoulders down? Because it's different. You're not. Covering him. You're, there's no control over 
you keeping his shoulders down, I guess. I don't... I can see... Because, like, now Doink. Doink, Doink could be pinned. Yeah. That, that's... Yeah, that's... But that's true. a tap out right there, though. What the fuck? <laughs> like, that's blatant tapping out. Yep. But, uh... I mean, I'm just a wrestler. I, will, I mean, so I buy into certain shit. So, I've, I've over the years, I've bought into being a pinfall like this. Um... But I can see the justifiable nature being like, well, he's not really, at that point you could say he's got the, I, I don't know, uh, if he fell off the top rope after a move and fell on his back and the other guy just happens to have his foot on his foot. Is that really a pinfall? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, but eh, really? It's like, eh, it's a blurred line. But I get it. I do. I'll watch it and I'll still, I'll still prove of it depending on who the wrestler is. And that's the thing too. Because if it's like, you can always play it off as like, oh, that was a dirty pin, depending on who it was, to make it justifiable yep. or not. Like, yep. if The Miz did that while he was using the figure four, and I would be like, that's... Why the fuck would he get a pinfall like that? But if Ric Flair did it, I'd be like, well, <laughs> you know, that's his move. <laughs> different strokes sense. for different folks. Amen. So yeah, exactly. Yep. So that's, you know... And I want to say now, thanks for anybody that tuned in or is... When you tune in to watching our Halloween special that we just did, or whatever it was called, the Halloween special. Um, not sure when that'll be up, but it'll be up shortly. Yep, we'll do it close to Halloween. Yeah. Yep. So, we had a good time doing it. I think, I think the Joker one and this Halloween one are probably two of the best ones we've done so far. Yeah. Now, really, you really got in-depth with the Joker, and we really got in-depth like with the horror one, so. Very in-depth with the horror one. Yeah. <laughs> Probably more in depth than we wanted to a little. A bit, little but, bit, you know. But that's all right. Oh, Indian Deathlock! I haven't seen one of those in a long time. That's you know, that's a pin. That's that's just a reverse pin. <laughs> 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 but like, he's kind of got it. Like Cena had the the STFU, like not putting any pressure on the. On well, it wouldn't be a clown match yeah. if you didn't mention that asshole. <laughs> I'm so glad he didn't come back for like the first episode of SmackDown and shit, like. That's kind of weird. That's one thing they don't they don't do like the the punch to the gut to kind of set up another move or a kick. Are you to the just gut gonna anymore. call everything they don't do anymore? <laughs> oh my god, this is. I, I just love watching this old stuff and and trying to and seeing like how guys don't watch this stuff and be like, oh, that's something I could do now. Something that's different that people haven't seen in a while. My friend, I feel like you're being one of the internet fans right now. You're not <laughs> understanding. It's not the talent's fault. The guy's fucking writing it for him and telling him what they can and can't do. I mean, it's got to be. I mean, because look what they do. Look at Moxley. He's doing the same thing, but it's a whole different vibe yeah. from one show to the other. You're you, you're totally limited on your what you can what you're supposed to do in WWE, and I totally will believe that. Like, you can't even go out there and acknowledge the fans. Yeah, you can't slap their hands unless you're a John Cena. Or you've been given special permission. Like, I... Well, wait a minute. Oh, got a got a second doink crawling under the ring. Wait a minute. That was, that was a great... Was this before or after time. Mania 9? Uh, this was after. Okay. Well, what happened, yeah, because that Mania 9, that was the first appearance of the dual doinks. Yep. With the whole crush angle where he hit him in the back of the head with the plaster cast. And this is one time where they're they're actually the wrestler is paying attention to the crowd pointing out something. Right, exactly. Opposed to, where is he? Yeah. He's down there? Oh, or he's just, in the rafters? Or just completely ignoring the fans mm -hmm. that are loud Ooh, as fuck. Oh, what a kick to the head oh, by the damn. doinkster. Oh, and Jannetty, you know, of course he kicked him in the back of the head and Jannetty sell in the front of his head, but eh. He kicked him know. in the side of the face. If you were watching instead of looking at me, <laughs> you would have saw that he kicked him in the side of the face. Right in the side. Look at the kid. He wants to be used as a weapon, damn it. <laughs> that kid has no idea what's going on. I would grab the kid and swing him around by his ankles. <laughs> see what happens. Like Samoa Joe swung, you know, Christopher, Christopher Daniels. Christopher Daniels, right. Yep. So I'm assuming it's Skinner as the other <laughs> doink. <laughs> it's a good way to get somebody that you've got under contract out there. Just put the fucking doink oh, mask on him and... Yeah, exactly. It looked like his hair was made out of a mop. Oh, get me off camera, damn it! Get, get him, get him over there! That's my Vince McMahon. <laughs> Look at that guy. He's like, that's his claim to fame. Look at that cameraman. 
wearing shorts, and McMahon would be flipping out right now if a cameraman looked like that right now. Do they even have them around the ring anymore? Yeah. Yep. Sometimes. Yeah, you know they, I mean? they like have to wear like all black, so you can't, you can hardly see. I them miss again. like the thousand Chinese men <laughs> standing around ringside. wearing WWF merchandise uh -huh. and shit. Yep. I miss it. Seeing Bill after all the time. Oh, which Doink came out? Nobody knows. Until we see they the don't face show paint. him on the camera yet. Oh, it's the same Doink. So what's the point? <laughs> It's an illusion, as Bobby Heenan always used to say. I can see why you picked this Raw. This is actually a... I like this match. I, I can't believe I never remembered this match. I I'm, I would imagine that this one is more remembered for the whole Razor Ramon 1, 2, 3... All right, here's match. the other... Oh, the switch. The other doink. <laughs> Playing like he's hurt. With the good face paint, as if, you know... He just applied some underneath the ring. He had a stencil that he just put oh, on. Yeah. Although, actually, it's not full face paint, so it does look kind of worn. So that that's actually a... I was going to say, if he got the three fall there, what the fuck would have been the point? <laughs> but... Because I'm just expecting a stupid finish to a match. Because it's just... How it oh, happened? Inside oh. cradle by Marty Jannetty. When he kicks out... Oh, face oh, rake. Oh, the, oh, thumb to the eye. That's the, oh, the turnbuckle shot. The old noggin to the turnbuckle. There you go. Yeah. And it's not often you shot. see, like, the bad guy, like, get over like this. Yeah. They, they were going all out with Doink for a while. And then... Go for a pile driver? Oh, man. The most overused move in the 90s? Yeah. That now he just killed them. They only do if it's a Canadian destroyer. And Doink gets the win! Oh my god, Doink. The evil clown. So, it, was, it was such Ooh, a... Oh, Macho, the macho man's, man's gotta come This in. is bullshit, Ebner! He got the fucking clown, I'll oh. get him! He's Macho Man, I'll snap into a clown! Oh, I think this was leading into the... Uh, Ooh. Where where Macho the feud with Doink and the Macho Man where Macho Man brought out the midget Macho Man Macho Midget, <laughs> I think that's where this was actually he heading. Oh, he from far away, uh, those two Doinks from far away. Janetti looks like uh, a tiny little beefcake, a little barber to beefcake. <laughs> Brutus the fucking barber beefcake. Brutus fucking barbers. Oh look at seeing Heenan's pointing out that Savage did it. Bobby Heenan being the weasel. This is your winner. He's got the same pants on that I wear. Yeah, dick it. I, I, I would love to find out how much money Savage had tied up in wardrobe. A lot. That's all you need he, to know. He had new gear, new hats, new boots for every fucking broadcast. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yes, sir. Same with Jimmy Hart. Like, he had new shit for I everything. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> I really hope he, him or Hogan are down there when I go down to Hogan's Beach Shop. You gonna harass him? I would. <laughs> Maybe. I would totally pull my macho man out on Hogan. Brother, I'm here! And I'm gonna kick your ass! <laughs> oh, the Ico Pro commercial with Lex Luger. The Lex Express. <laughs> I'm expecting to see fucking Doc Hendricks in the background doing some sort of stupid interview. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they sold that shit at GNC? Get my action figure like Hogan and Virgil! <laughs> <laughs> IRS, the Macho Man, back when they only used to release like two or three figures at a time. Now they make the, the wrestlers like vintage toys like that. Yep. I don't have any. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Savage just lording over him while he Heenan and Vince McMahon are talking. Savage was so intense, even at commentary. It was fucking tremendous. Mr. Hughes. Holy shit. I forgot about him. Came out with Triple H at one point. Came out with Jericho. This guy's the man. He's a bodyguard. Oh, the Raw girl holding up the sign. That's something you probably you wouldn't see anymore. And yeah. Fink looking completely confused. Oh, it's another jobber with a mullet <laughs> and a mustache. Uh, yeah, Amazing. call me. Um, fucking, I don't even know who he looks like. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> oh. Oh, Mr. Hughes with the urn and Harvey Whippleman in tow. I'm going to assume he feuded with The Undertaker. 
Yeah, they they stole the urn and he hit Paul Bearer with it, and Paul Bearer was out for a while. This was right around the time Giant Gonzalez was around too. Kind of a transition into SummerSlam. Now I want to ask, was uh, Bobby who? Well, that makes a lot of sense. Wow, you don't get much more of a jobber name than Bobby Who. Who the fuck is that? Bobby Who? Bobby Who. Sounds like a freaking old time. People want to say Braden Walker was a bad name. Okay, Bobby Who? <laughs> but was, uh. What the hell's his name? I'm trying to think. Oh, Roadkill going down in uh, ECW at this time? I don't know. He might have been. Oh, the Mid Hudson Civic Center. That's where we met the Ultimate Warrior. We met a lot of them. Yeah. But, uh, like, this is the very much black version of, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, uh, Fat Blade. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Blade. Look at him, yeah. right? Wearing the sunglasses through the whole And that haircut? Right? Motherfucker, I'm going to put you up. There's vampires in there. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Have Chris Christofferson walking out with him? And, yeah, that's, right. that's Fat Blade. That's Harvey oh Whistlerman. Yeah. Harvey Whistlerman. <laughs> Yup, we figured it out, dude. <laughs> yup, I make all of his weapons. I made that, all of it. He's like his, he's like a skinny Jim Cornette. <laughs> <laughs> he is, too. A skinny Jim Cornette that smoked too much with that voice. Is he dead? Whippleman? Yeah. No, he's st- I think he still does behind-the-scenes stuff for WWE. Oh, no shit. Yeah. He's pretty much the guy that, oh, somebody needs a sandwich, go get it. Wow. You know, somebody needs coffee, go get it. Yeah. So he's an intern still. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> It's referee just, Tim White. He's just a, uh, yeah. He's not trying to commit suicide in this match. See, I like moves like that where you take him and just fucking hurl him and then yep. bam! And then Black Blade slams his ass it's, to the ground. It's so funny, just, they did not give a shit Ooh. about these jobbers. They just beat the fuck out of them. Bobby who? 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 <laughs> and the New Day would have a field day who? with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, they see you see his face on their trunks. Yeah. <laughs> That would actually be creative. And that's, they seem like the kind of guys that would actually do something like that. That would figure something like that out. Look at this motherfucker picking his head up twice. Old school heel move. P- picking a guy up to give him more punishment. If you can smell my breath through the camera, it smells like dick and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Black Blade kicking some ass. And these job guys were not getting... They probably were making, like, if 200 bucks a night to just get the fuck beat out of I them. would get... I'd get beat up for 200 bucks. <laughs> Hell, I've been beat up for free. Come in for TV <laughs> and just get this shit kicked out of you. Why not? No no promise that you'll ever be on the roster. Just just come in and get this shit kicked out of you. Bobby who? <laughs> just choking him. I feel like this is kind of racist now with no context to what's going on. <laughs> Because this guy straight up looks like a redneck, and this black guy straight up looks like a gangster. Oh! oh that was a bad slam. Yep. Oh, I picked him up on that one. Don't end it on that one. Oh. oh! Oh, but he's picking him up to give him more punishment, I think. Yep, just toss him right out of the ring like he's a piece of shit. Because his I'm name is Bobby Hill. Fuck shit up. I earned this! <laughs> I always hated that when they did that as a joke. <laughs> I get why they fed him to The Undertaker, just a big dude that can, you know, move well. Makes sense. It's good to see, uh, I didn't realize Ezekiel Jackson was a second generation superstar, though. <laughs> oh, the USS Intrepid, the body slam challenge with... Lex Yoko's Luger! Game. Luger turned babyface. Started the Lex Express, driving around in a bus for three or four months. I'm the macho I'm man, and even I when clap. I clap, I break song barriers. <laughs> oh yeah, big man, yep. dig it. Just, just, Don't point at me, brother. He's he's one like you know like Kurt Angle needing to be in constant motion. Savage got to be in yeah. constant motion. Got to be doing something. There's a gaggle of fireworks going off under my hat, McMahon. <laughs> That's why I'm bald on top. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love Macho Man. Oh, Razor Ramon coming out with the money to give to the one two three kid to make him wrestle him. He, I guess he just added a chain every once in a while to all the chains that he had. Two chain. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just we'll we'll take a vest and we'll just you know applique something to the back of it and that's your gear. 
And they, they got it. They gave the guy the name just from the you know the fans chanting one two three. They're chanting one two three. We'll call him the one two three kid. But I'm pretty sure that's the diamond stud. And he, he hardly ever wins a match, but you know we'll call you know the one two three is for all the times that he gets pinned. We'll call him Lightning Kid every now and then. <laughs> Uh, Razor Ramon was a great baby face, but I also loved him as a heel, too. Just the cocky, scar face, Cuban heel. That could not be any more... He's not even close to being Cuban, but played the character so well. You gotta have a pretty cool, like, personalized gift from him, right? I do have yeah. a... Pretty, I wonder who gave that to me. Some guy. Some guy! Some guy. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I just did a little Macho Man there. There's no way there's ten grand in that bag. Look at Sean Waltman. He looks like twelve. He is twelve. He's going on thirteen. <laughs> Razor Ramon is thirty, going on forty-two. <laughs> well, McMahon, these two gotta get in the ring and do the thing. Ding ding. That's what Macho Man would say. You know he would say that yep. stuff. You know he would. I can't stop eating Skittles. <laughs> They're so yummy. I love Skittles. Scott Hall, how he was never a world champion, I'll never understand. Drugs. So un. <laughs> <Dennis Ann. laughs> but when is it easy or not? We might have had a revelation there, folks. Such such a good character. Like he was so over. He 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 was at least the second baby face for a while. And should have been even for a, as a transitional change. Yeah, but he's not a real American hero. Was that? I don't know if that was the words in Hogan's. <laughs> is, is that who you're talking about? Is Hogan? <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure what you're talking about right there. Because at this time, I mean, Brett was over. Yeah. I guess right. He had to Maybe. be. They had really nobody else. Yeah. I mean, and this was the time when Razor was still heel. So. Come here, you little chico. <laughs> that, oh, take that little yeah, shitty throw. Up. But at, at this point. He, Waltman's got to be so nervous. Like He's only had a couple matches, and now they're actually throwing him into a, a pretty good storyline here. That's, that's got to be nerve-wracking as fuck. I can't, I can't imagine that. Knowing that like millions of people are watching you on TV, and that you're, you know that you've got a big storyline, that this is actually going to lead somewhere, I can't imagine the nerves that, at that point. Drugs. <laughs> Well, they, that whole clique was doing a lot of drugs, so. Oh, oh he did it on that choke slam. Oh, man. You want to know why I wasn't the champion? Because <laughs> of moves like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean Walton just laying there like he is dead. All the old abdominal stretch and holding the leg up for extra leverage. One of the only guys I ever saw do that. I think Shane Douglas did it for a while, too. Then grabbing his hair and just giving him shit. Such a good heel. So many mullets. <laughs> right, so there's a lot many. of mullets going on. It's, it's astonishing. It's kind of like how today's look is the fade. Yeah. And I can't fucking stand it. Because <laughs> everybody, they all look the same. Yep. And they all built the same. And everybody's gear now looks the same. It's all got to be black and leather. Like sil yeah, yeah. Chains and fucking spikes coming off in it. And I get that, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, well, they all looked cartoony back then, but they all looked different. And they're yeah. wearing, like, their gear is still within the realms of looking like wrestling gear. Yep. Yeah. Like, now guys are literally, I mean, and, and I'm not saying it's generally now, but it's, a, it's overly abundant now. That they have to wear, like, I, I, I'm going to make this up, but, like, jean denim over their knee pads and shit. Yep. To where it's like, we got to look edgy and stuff. Where, yeah, you could say, well, their outfits look like it's the same kind of spandex and shit. It is. But it's wrestling gear. It's just yeah. got logos on it. Yep. Like, look at Edge and Christian's gear when they first started. It was wrestling gear with, like, the stupidest fucking, like, designs yep. with, like, their names infused in it. Yep. It took 10 years for Edge to become the rated R superstar. Yeah. 
And then he was another one that had different gear every fucking show. But it was still the same... Yep. Same vein, yeah. Exactly. Wow. It's weird to see just the ring, the plastic ring skirt with nothing on it. So much has changed. It's crazy. It was, careful there, Razor. Those was 10,000, pound, 1,000 pound steps. Those are so heavy. They change all the time. <clears throat> Is he going to go for the Razor's Edge razor's on the outside? Edge. Oh, my God. Oh, just the uppers. Fucking shoulders hit the concrete. That's got to suck balls. Oh, and here is where the one, two, three kid knocks himself out. Bam! Oh. Head first onto the concrete. Fuck, man. Talk about nerves, huh? Yeah. <laughs> God, I mean, you see this? See where he hit it? Yeah. Yeah, it left a fucking... <laughs> can we rewind that or are they going to show a replay? Uh, we looks, rewind I'd like to it. see it again. Yeah, he just fucking bit it. And just like lightning, oh. folks, look how fast he goes up these steps. And like a lightning bolt, look how fast he strikes the earth. <laughs> Watch this. Just boom, oh. head first. Hey, thanks for taking the padding away. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you could just tell Razor's trying to pick him up and he's just fucking dead weight. Like, there's nothing there. And at this point, you've got to throw everything out because... He, because he's dead. Waltman has no idea where he is at this point. No fucking clue. I mean, he's got a totally has a concussion right now. Fucking head first onto the concrete. <laughs> that that maneuver he just pulled off, <laughs> Waltman just pulled off, is uh is the reason he doesn't remember he was number thirty in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was like eight years later, but that's the, that's the move that still fucked that up. <laughs> oh, he's stealing the money without winning the match. What a dick move. You can tell, like, he just, he has no clue. Oh, I gotta, I'm supposed to run here. I'm supposed to run away. Yeah, running right out the door. Emergency exit, the alarm's probably going off. Oh, and what a surprise, he's got a car waiting for him to take him out. Stealing Razor's money. And then these guys would become the best of friends. I wonder, hey, where's my $10,000, Chico? What? <laughs> well, Razor, we're here back. I'm McMahon. What the hell just happened? Oh, look, a Bruce Pritchard sighting. Holy oh. shit. I love you. <laughs> Chico. He fell on his head, Chico. I don't know what the fuck to do after that. Wherever he thinks he's going, he doesn't have a clue. But he knows who I am, and he'll always forget why I'm here. <laughs> I'll see him at the strip club with my $10,000. Hey, yo. <laughs> well, thank you. What a maneuver. <laughs> Macho Man, what'd you think of that? Oh, I don't know, McMahon. Oh, look at my action figure, brother. <laughs> We're still... Got Hulk Hogan on this because God damn it, he's like John Cena. We've got to have Hulk Hogan for everything. Even though I'm the man, <laughs> look at that woman up there. What would you do with her, McMahon? I want her to snap into my Slim Jim, McMahon. Oh, dig it! <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, oh, oh mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, thinking while McMahon is talking. I hope someday I'm in a Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. Is this the end of the show, McMahon? That uh. seems kind of a a crappy match to end the show on. I don't dig it. Especially with you talking. Watch him fucking die. <laughs> oh. And that is the end of the show. Wow, that, that concludes. <laughs> it was only a 47 minute episode. How, how does that. In a two hour show? I think they were only one hour then. Really? Yeah. I'm glad I grew up when I did. <laughs> I got two hours, which and, meant like and, an hour and. 40 minutes. And you had jobber matches in it, you know, to space out the hour. Yeah. It's pretty bad when you gotta have that to space out your hour broadcast instead of actually your, having stars on Your it. Doink the Clown match spread that out the most. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And not a single title match. Yeah. Well, McMahon! <laughs> Whoa, she is basically naked. <laughs> Was Vince Russo booking, bro? bro? Bro, Monday Night Raw, bro. <laughs> I'm Vince McMahon here with Bobby Heaton and 
And the macho, macho man, man wearing his mother's curtain drapes. Thank you, <laughs> Mrs. Macho Man. Uh, you know, McMahon. I can't do it, Heenan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look mm -hmm. into yep. my mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta draw the attention of me. Gotta put myself over, brother. I got neon wristbands, McMahon. Uh, waiting for a maneuver with. It. Yeah! <laughs> no. I was waiting for him to do that. <laughs> oh man, just McMahon is so out of place with the tux in between those two. Such a generic set, but still, it's like the start of the LED. Like, oh yeah, back in the day, Michaels, I'm playing with my mullet. You're right. <laughs> And both of them had mullets, both Shawn Michaels and Two Diesel. dudes with attitudes with mullets glued, I don't know. <laughs> you know what looks cool if I tuck my pants into my boots? Diesel looking like something Elias would wear now. And the spangly, what? Is that like a sexual handle? thing? No, you would no. wear him? <laughs> what? <laughs> His outfit, sir. His outfit. I don't understand. <laughs> Shawn Michaels doing his best, you know, Chippendales dance. Back when his knees actually worked. And he didn't do the googly eyes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Kamala! Kamala! <laughs> the Ugandan giant. Played that character <laughs> so well. That wasn't racist? <laughs> That wasn't a racist well, it was thing. totally a racist gimmick, but... But, right, what I just did wasn't racist. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be. You know, just an African aborigine slapping his belly and, you know, not knowing what's going on. Yeah, you know, barefoot with, you know, the cheetah skin freaking, you know... Did you know his finisher was called Ebola? <laughs> Is that a fact? Is that... My sources yeah. have confirmed. Did you get that off of Wikipedia? No, I didn't. I got it off a... Uh, Kamala, shiny. Some other site. Shiny. The white man have shiny. <laughs> Can I do that or no? <laughs> I did. You did, so. So I guess we're kind of going into another episode um, of if Raw, that's what so, it is, yeah, I guess. I mean, we can watch. We'll go into the first match at least. Okay. And, you know. Let's see what the Ugandan giant does against uh, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Wow. Just... I forgot that Kamala was here in 93. This far into 93, too. In June. You gonna fuck with me? You not gonna fuck with me, is he? I would love to own one of those old school banners. You can have one if you make it for $30. <laughs> I, I love that old Monday Night Raw logo. Shawn Michaels, in my opinion, one of the most overrated wrestlers of all time. He's great, but he's not. The greatest you know and and after you mentioned that like going back and watching some of his stuff ridiculous it, it really is he really was yeah and i get maybe at the time it was you know the thing but like in retrospect of like what people hold quality wise is good i don't yeah. hold that up there yep and i've always i've even before you said that i've always said that iron man match was totally underrated overrated oh with, with him, him and, and brett, brett. It just, I get, I it's a good match, I like it, but I think the one with Triple H and The Rock, the 60-minute Iron Man match, was way better. Mm -hmm. You know, Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels was way better. Yep. You know, I I, I do enjoy the match, it just... I, For what it's being held up to. Yeah, as. it's, you know... Now, when people compare, like, the first ladder match with Shawn Michaels and, you know, Razor Ramon... That's different. Uh, that still holds up. Yes, no, you know it does. I mean? It really does. That's a cool yeah. match. Yeah. Because it even... It, not, it's not perfect. Like, the ladders fold out from under him and shit, so... Yeah. It didn't look like it was supposed to... Oh, that was supposed to happen. Yeah. And they were and doing... It was fun. I and like And they that waited match. to incorporate the ladder, you know, a until while they had the match. Yeah, yeah they know? did. They wrestled yep. quite a bit. Yeah, they before used, they brought the gimmick in. They used a lot more psychology in that match than they do in, in ladder matches now. Yep, I now, agree. Now it's all about just doing high spots on the ladder. Yep, I you agree. That, I mean, that is a good match. Though. And like Shawn Michaels just hucking the ladder at Razor Ramon's <laughs> back, you know, like... You just hear it shattering. Yep. Oh, no, 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 no. trying to eat Shawn Michaels. Well, Michaels is kind of beefy at this point, so, you know. This is just cannibalism <laughs> and racism. It is, it is it is a racist as fuck character. 
Especially when he would come out with like the spear and the like, mask and you're, shit. You're real, literally calling him a spear chucker at that point. Like, wow, that's, he didn't without throw saying it. it you know, throw it. I'm sure he threw it at some. And point. just because he's a spear, like he he's a <laughs> being portrayed as an African tribesman doesn't mean you have to label him spear chucker. <laughs> that's your racism, I, sir. I guarantee you, somebody called him well, spear chucker. Well, somebody, but if you're thinking you're that, tell, you're your telling s- me when. Terry Funk came into Memphis. He never called him a spear chucker. Why does Terry Funk's opinion have to be mine? <laughs> if I'm watching this and I don't think of him as a spear chucker, I'm not saying you have to call him a spear chucker. Well, you saying. just you just did. <laughs> you just did by saying because he came out with the spear. He has to be a spear chucker. <laughs> well, no, that it's not true. Look at that, Kamala trying to pin him with a bear hug. See, that would be more of a pin than, yeah. than a figure four. Yep. And that's a perfect move for a guy that is like that. Like he would, that would be a, a move. Oh yeah, that, uh, a Usually guy that has your strength. Yeah, yeah. And a guy that doesn't know holds would just be like, "Well, I'm just gonna fucking yeah. grab him." You know? Yep. Kamala's one guy that he knew how to play that character, and I, I don't know of a lot of guys that could actually portray that character as well as he did. They just <laughs> <laughs> hold this hand up, <gasps> you know, just as a chop to intimidate people and shit great i can't imagine being barefoot in the ring though no like just landing and shit too. yeah hmm. and and like you know, that's how rusev ended up breaking his you know his heel because he did that flip over the top rope and landed i'm surprised a lot of guys like kamala and the samoans the samoans wrap their ankles they wrap, though, so, so yeah, yeah yeah but still like snuka being barefoot all those years because he killed somebody he got extra strength when he did that he was like shao khan yeah ingested their soul yeah yeah that makes sense your soul will be mine and it'll make my ankle stronger brother brother (laughs) coconut time (laughs) dude i don't know if you said dude (laughs) i'll kick your fat fucking thighs (laughs) so Shawn michaels was just thinking Kamal's like, my fucking thighs, help me. (laughs) (laughs) Doing the Mr. Perfect, scissoring the leg and dropping down on it. Yeah, too bad it wasn't perfect. (laughs) Earl Hebner not giving a shit. Actually, I want to thank our fan for uh, requesting this because I'm actually enjoying going back and watching some old school Monday Night Raw. I'm going to put you on the spot. Thank him, thank him by his name. I'm not going to lie. I forgot his fucking name. I feel horrible, but I forgot his name. <sighs> That's the kind of content we run. <laughs> we love our viewers, but we don't know you. Some people drop kayfabe names. Some people forget names. That one has nothing to do with the other. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> Shawn Michaels going for the other fucking fat thigh. <laughs> Kicking him right in the side of the knees. You think he's... Got intent to hurt him. You'd think that's some kind of lawsuit. I mean, he's not going out there to... Lo- he's not looking like he's trying to win the match. He's just looking like he's trying to hurt him. Then you got this dude in the jacket just walking around like he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Is that... Are we talking about the guy they just showed or, or yeah, Kevin yeah. Nash? Yeah. Because Kevin Nash... Well, Kevin Nash might not know either. Oh, okay. I mean, he's Can probably we... doing some drugs in the back with one, two, three kids and Razor Ramon. Oh. Three men, three men in, a, in a coke line. It's a sequel to Three Men in a... Baby. I mean, I'm not speaking out of school. I mean, they, they've admitted that they did shitloads of drugs. So, True. you know, that's... And even so, if they didn't admit it, I'd still just assume it. <laughs> that's how we get through life. We assume things. Yeah. I assume Shawn Michaels probably blew a dude once. Uh, he might have. I mean, he was on the cover of Playgirl. So you might have heard here, know. like, a really filthy story I heard about Rod Stewart. Yeah, really. You want to hear his filthy... Nah, I, mean, I mean, might as well. I mean... He had to, the story was like he was fucked up on drugs and his band wouldn't go out on on stage and perform. So he blew them all to like give them incentive. And like after the concert, they had to like pump his stomach. That's disturbing on so many levels. And the dude's fucking famous. At this point? I've never sucked a dick, and I have, like, two friends. <laughs> this guy sucked his friend's dick and has a mass following. At that point, the show doesn't go on. Does what you say earlier still 
like hold strong different strokes for different <laughs> folks yeah yeah if you, you talk about stroking with your mouth yeah i mean <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's just one of those things i don't i don't know i mean uh, Weird story. I'm sure Pat Patterson in the back would do that. Well, I'm not telling you about it. Get stuck a dick in your blood. That's my Pat Patterson. <laughs> You're like more over the top than Bruce Pritchard. Yeah. Had, so, yeah. All my impressions are Bruce Pritchard's <laughs> amplified because I, I don't know these people. I mean, my, your Dusty's is tremendous. I'm not I even going to try to do it because I feel like when I try hard, I fuck him up. <laughs> so I, Yeah, when it's more spontaneous, it's, it's yeah. a lot better. Yeah. And Kamala trying to pin him while he's face down. The reverse pin, like dude. I told you. What? What? Just looking at Hebner like it, I pinned him, and Hebner stooging it off. You gotta roll him over. Look how stupid he is. He, he rolled him over again. Yep. That was such a great gimmick. Look at Hebner rolling around like a dog. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> and now Nash just looking like a total goon. Yeah, how Nash became world champion over Hall. Yeah. Is crazy. Because Nash has... Uh, and I'm going to say... Oh, the super kick to the back of the head while Nash was distracted. Nash is great and all, but he has nowhere near ring ability that oh. Hall had. And to me, nowhere near the charisma. No. Like, when he was in WCW and he was the cool heel, yeah. But here, and, and even when he was Diesel, mm -hmm. and, you know, with the chant, yeah, he did not he did not have the charisma whatsoever. The Ugandan giant going mad. He just got kicked in the back of the head. Oh, there you go! Oh, oh Nash with the forearm to the back of the head. What a maneuver. Stomping the shit out of him. And come on, not selling it at all. Well, he's thick. <laughs> that he is. He's, it hurts him. Oh, what a huge bunch. And Michael's going out of the way. Oh, he's in a maneuvers. <laughs> that was the, the rapid fire punches. Like, it, those. The, like Shane Shane, the Shane McMahon punches, yep. Who's Just gonna come out and save Kamala? Where's Kimchi? <laughs> and we know Steve Lombardi's in the back. Have him come out as Kimchi. Brooklyn Brawler. Nobody. And that was worth it just to see Earl Hebner rolling around trying to show Kamala. Yeah, that was you know. fun when they actually when fucking referees actually mattered. <laughs> now they don't. Yeah. Promo oh. video for the Intrepid. But other than that, I mean, I don't really want to watch the whole episode, do you? So, I guess we can say, I'm sorry I forgot your name, and I'm sorry that, you know, I forgot your name when you requested it. I didn't forget your name, I will say your name, because I looked it up. Did you? Yes, I did. King of Requests. Thank you. That's your new nickname, King of Requests, because you're the only one that gave us a request. See, and I don't know your name, but you're the king of them. See, folks, he just likes giving me shit, and I appreciate it, so. <laughs> king of Requests. But... This has actually been a fun episode of the Comic Book I've enjoyed podcast, it, yeah. even short as it was, but it's cool to watch some old school stuff. Please, listeners, however many of you there are, send more requests. Sometimes we run out of material, so we'd kind of like to hear what you want us to cover, because this was actually Seriously, who booked this fun. shit? Yeah. Because we don't know anymore. <laughs> we don't do it anymore. We don't book our own stuff. We don't have any idea of what we're even doing. <laughs> Like we've never had an idea what we were doing. There's, we're a, just, there's you know. a piece of lint on the floor. That's our entire theme of next week's show, lint. Because we're just we're out of ideas. I'm, I mean, I'm down. I mean, if that's if you can come up with a whole show on lint, we got belly button lint. We got laundry lint. We got <laughs> the lint you get inside your pockets of your jeans. You got carpet lint. You got if you looked under your couch, you got lint under your couch. Wow. We got lint burger cheese. <laughs> I think we should end on Lint Burger Cheese. I mean, hey, that's... It's better to end it on a high note than on a low note. <laughs> and I don't know if we're which one we're at. We had a high note? Maybe at the beginning of the show when we said welcome and then oh, everything just went, went down downhill from yeah, there. Off the just, rails from there. Yeah. All right. So, well, I mean, he's Ace Williams. Oh, yeah. Ace Williams. A-C-E-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Oh, yeah. That was the Sesame Street outro. I'm One. Dave. <laughs> Thanks for checking us out on the Comic Wrestling Podcast, on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts, Breakers, Spotify, YouTube. YouTube. Check out the YouTube. The videos are always They're tremendous. Good. They are good. So thank you so much for checking us out. <laughs>